Good day. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Donna Cameron. I am part of Continuity's Regulatory Operations Center. And today I'm going to share with you some of the regulatory activity that we addressed in the month of August. Starting with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or the CFPB, they issued an interpretive rule to talk about how digital marketers might be considered service providers under the Consumer Financial Protection Act. And therefore they would be subject to the Consumer Financial Protection Act's prohibition against unfair, deceptive or abusive acts or practices. You might be aware that the CFPB has been focusing on UDAP quite a bit lately We've seen several issuances around um, ways that companies can get into UDAP trouble, and this is another one. So what this one is telling us is that um, digital marketers are likely providing more than just time or space um, for you to advertise. So the Consumer Financial Protection Act has an exception for those who only provide time or space. And that would be like a newspaper or a TV station that gives you time or space to put in an advertisement. Digital marketers are probably co-mingling the time or space availability with also um, targeting advertisements to consumers. And the way they do that is they gather data and then they use algorithms and they figure out which consumers to target, which markets to target, um, what time of day to provide an advertisement. So they're really doing a lot more than just time or space. And when they're doing that, they become subject to those UDAP prohibitions in the Consumer Financial Protection Act. So the CFPB wanted to be sure that everyone is aware of that. And if you employ digital marketers, you'll want to make sure that you know what they do for you and whether they are subject to those UDAP prohibitions so that you can make sure that um, you don't get in any trouble from something that they are doing for you. Then the CFPB issued another one of those circulars that they're now um, providing to the regulatory agencies. And this one, again, is around UDAP, and it is letting everyone know that if you are not sufficiently protecting data about consumers, if you don't have strong information security programs, then you may be violating, again, the Consumer Financial Protection Act's prohibition on unfair acts or practices. So this circular included some specific things that you might do to make sure you have robust data security. Um, and they wanted you just to know that they will see it as perhaps unfair um, or deceptive if you do not have sufficient programs in place. Moving on to the FDIC, we had an advisory about crypto companies. And this was around how crypto companies might misrepresent whether their products are um, insured by the FDIC. Apparently what has been happening is some of these companies go out of business and they have led people to believe that the products they offer were FDIC insured when in fact they are not. So um, just some heads up there that some of these crypto companies might be leading folks to believe that they are insured. Also from the FDIC, we had some guidance. And this is around um, when you might charge multiple fees for the same item that is represented for payment. So somebody maybe pre presents a check for payment and there isn't enough money in the account to cover it. So you charge a fee. Um, and then maybe it's re represented and you charge another fee because there still isn't enough money. And this can happen multiple times. And the FDIC is concerned about these multiple NSF fees and how they are impacting consumers. So they provided some guidance to um, address potential UDAP risk. I think we can see a theme here um, that you may be treating folks unfairly by charging those multiple fees, especially if they are not given sufficient time to bring their account to a positive balance before they get hit again with a fee 
or if your disclosures are not very clear about when you will charge those fees and how much they might be. So uh, the FDIC wanted their institutions to know that they will be watching these practices. Um, it may be a violation of law, it may be a UDAP issue, um, and they will expect you to take full corrective action. So if you're FDIC supervised, take a look at your NSF fee practices. Um, also, again, from the FDIC, we had um, a proposal to include um, modifications to borrowers experiencing financial difficulty as part of the underperforming assets ratio and the higher risk assets ratio for purposes of determining your deposit insurance assessments. And this would apply to large and highly complex institutions. So that modifications to borrowers experiencing financial difficulty is an accounting term that was recently introduced by the FASB and the FDIC proposes to include that in some of those ratios that they use when they determine your deposit insurance assessments. So they do want comments on that one actually um, August 26th. So um, probably out of time to comment, but just be aware that that is something they are proposing to do. Moving to the Federal Reserve, um, similarly to what the FDIC did not too long ago, the Federal Reserve wants their institutions to know that they need to notify the agency if they plan to engage in any crypto asset related activities. So they would really like to know about it before you do that. But if you're already doing it, they want you to notify them promptly. They also, um, before you start any of these activities, you are expected to make sure that they are legally permissible. Uh, they want you to check to see whether there are any federal or state filings that might be required. And then, of course, they expect you to implement adequate systems and risk management and controls so that you are um, appropriately handling any risk associated with those crypto asset related activities. Um, also from the Federal Reserve, they did adopt final guidelines that the reserve banks will use when they are reviewing requests for master accounts and services. Also, these updated guidelines will be applied when a reserve bank is reevaluating um, an institution's existing account. So nothing that you need to do here, but you do want to be probably aware of what the Federal Reserve Banks will be looking at um, when they are evaluating account access requests. Then from the FDIC, the NCUA, and the OCC, we had a request for comments on um, proposed changes to their 2009 policy statement for commercial real estate loan accommodations and workouts. That statement has not been updated since 2009, as I said, and they are thinking that it's about time to get it up to date. So they have proposed some changes and they would like your comments on that by October 3rd. Lastly, from NACHA, we had a bulletin and they wanted to let you know that starting in September, the Federal Reserve and the Clearinghouse are going to start delivering additional late night deliveries of ACH files to RDFIs. Um, you are not required to take any action when you get these, but you do have the option of processing these late night files so that you can better reflect your customer account balances over a full day or a weekend. So that's some of what we, we did during the month of August in the federal regulatory activity area. Um, and I hope you have a great September. I will be talking with you towards the end of that month.